Hey guys, the other day I posted this rendering on Instagram and I got a lot of questions on how to do this specific metal material. So here's how to do it. For the material, I'm going to use some textures from polygon.com and specifically it's the uh, diffuse map from this metal copper repolished 001. It's the um, gloss from this stainless steel brust worn 002 and it's the gloss and normal map from this aluminum scratched 007. And for your information, I used this beautiful slider for reference. Always good to have when creating a material. All right, so here inside Keyshot, I have the model and let's dig straight into it. Right click and go to edit material graph and open that up. The first thing I want to do is to change the diffuse type to a metal type. So I double click it and go to material type and select metal like so then i want to load in my maps and i want to load all in from the beginning because otherwise when i add in a map uh, the layout tends to change and i hate when i have to rearrange that so let me go ahead and add in all my maps at once here we go and you might notice that we have more than four we have this holes and dents as well that we are going to use for a bump map uh, but I will talk more about that in a minute. So let's start with the color. And for the color, I'm going to use this uh, copper material. And I hit C on the keyboard to preview the color information. And maybe I want to adjust the scale a bit. So let's try 25. Looks good. So I take that, add to the color. And then I right click the connection, go to utilities and select color adjust to take out some of the saturation. Take that down to 0.6 and Change the hue maybe slightly to, whoops, not that much. Let me hit C on the keyboard to see what we have. Just to make it a bit more yellow-ish. Maybe take out some more saturation. I think that looks good. All right, moving on to the bump. So I have this holes and dents um, bump that I created myself. And if I view the raw call information, it's basically if I again adjust the size, uncheck this use deep high for size and take the size way down. You'll see it's a map with some white dots. So you should be able to create something like this using the uh, spot procedural as well. But for now I will use this one and put it into the bump. And I'll change the bump height to a negative value. So maybe 0.3, negative 0.3. Uh, and it adds just... Um, some random dents into the surface. I want to cobble this bump map with the one from the aluminum scratched material. So I right click the bump connection, select utilities and select bump add. This allows me to add in another bump map. So take this aluminum scratched and add to the bump number two. And remember when you use these materials from Polygon that you have to check the uh, normal map here and invert the height. I'm not sure it will give a big difference in this case, but let's just do it anyways. And um, so here we see that this bump map adds just a bit of irregularities to the surface and breaks up the uh, reflection just a little bit. Before working with the roughness, I just quickly want to show you my environment that I'm using. And it's just the basic two panels tilted 4K that you find in your Keyshot library. The uh, only thing I did was to adjust the brightness down a bit and the contrast up a bit. And then I made sure to position it carefully. So by holding down control and left click and drag, you are able to rotate it. And I found that somewhere around here where we have these two lines um, highlighting or these two lines reflecting the light. Um, and maybe something around here where we have this contrast in the lighting uh, is pretty good for setting up this material. Now we want to work with the roughness and for that we're going to use these two gloss maps. Let's start with the aluminum scratched and add that into this plus sign here to get access to the roughness channel like so. All right, so at first everything becomes quite um, rough and it's because this is a gloss map. We can see here in the name, it's called gloss and that's the opposite of a roughness map. So. To get what we're looking for, I want to add in a color to number node. And I want to take the output from to one, like that, and the output to to zero. 
and that's essentially uh, inverting the map. So if we go into the color to number node, hit C on the keyboard, um, we can see that it's still quite bright, meaning that everything will be quite rough. But what we can do now is to take the input to, drag that down, and at one point we will get all the details to come through. Cool, so if we look at the map now, we get something like this. And especially here on the top where we have uh, a bit of highlight, we'll see how these lines are coming through. And we also start to see down here, once it rises up, there's very subtle differences in roughness that looks really good and helps to make this material look believable. One thing I want to adjust is the position of this map. So if I see the raw color output here, we can see that we have the lines going in this direction here and on the top it's going in the other direction. I would like those to go in the same direction. So what I do is to select the map and hit move texture, make sure that it's center on part. And then I have to rotate it. So when I have this region view open, uh, I can select this rotate uh, thing. So I have, um, I need to get out of that and I hold down control shift R to exit that. You can also hit the button up here in the toolbar, render region, it's called. So now I can take this and rotate it and I hold down shift to snap to 15 degree, degrees increments so I can get a full 90 degrees rotation. And I think this looks quite good. So I hit okay and exit this color preview. I could have stopped here, I think it looks quite good, but I went ahead and combined this gloss map from the aluminum scratch material with the uh, gloss map from the stainless steel material as well. So let's see how that looks. Um, again, I want to rotate this in 90 degrees uh, for the texture on the top, so I hit move texture, center on part, and then hold down shift while rotating this, like so. And let me activate my region view again so it will render faster. Cool. So I will duplicate this color to number. We're going to need it for the stainless steel brushed gloss as well. And let me hit C on the keyboard to preview that. Looks quite nice. Let me try and take it down a bit further like that. So what I did here was to use a color composite node to combine these. So I right click this roughness connection, go to utilities and select color composite. And I add this second gloss map into the uh, background layer and go to my color composite, hit C on the keyboard. And in this specific case, I change the blending mode to screen. And I went ahead and took the background alpha down a bit. So what we see is that, so we have this map from the aluminum. We have this map. I think that we need to make this a bit darker like so. We have this map from the steel and then we combine them, we get details from both. Maybe let me try and take this map and move it a bit. Oops, again, we have this region view problem. Here we go. So now from this steel brushed map, we have this black line um, and we get that blending through here when we combine them. So we have a bit more detail going on. So again, if I exit the preview and let this rest up and uh, maybe activate my region view, here we go, like that, we will start to see uh, how it all comes together. And again, I want to mention when you work with shiny materials like this, your lighting is key. So for example, if I hold down control, left click and drag, uh, if my lighting were like here, for example, I wouldn't be able to tell the, the details I was I were adjusting here on the top. And again, maybe it, if it didn't reflect any lighting, it will look dark like this. Still, it works pretty good in this case, but just be aware of how your lighting is positioned. And also it helps to have some other things or some other elements in your scene that reflects in the material. Um, if I hold down Alt and left click on this part to just show that one, we lose all the information of how reflective this material is uh, on this side. We can still see it inside it here now, but we get way more information once we show everything and we can see uh, specifically this reflection. And, oops, and that's all. So I hope this helped you to understand how to create more 
realistic materials yourself. If you like this, hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button. And until next time, take care.